So how are we doing in reality? How do we stack up against all the others? Well, first of all, note the temperature that we have achieved and documented in peer-reviewed published accounts. 260 keV. This is the equivalent of approximately 3 billion degrees centigrade or Kelvin. So this is far and away the highest temperature being used in any fusion device. Our confinement time is about where we want it to be. It's not very long, but we don't need it very long. Where we still need improvement is the density. At the moment, we're only about one one thousand of solid density. We have to go up to approximately solid density for net energy. Our energy in 60 kilojoules, far less than most devices. This is a very small device. Our energy out a quarter of a joule. So far, we've raised five million dollars. So where do we place? Well, in the density time temperature product race, we're number five. We're obviously far beyond most of the um, private fusion efforts. The only one that comes close, which actually is not a privately funded, it's a university funded effort, and partially government funded as PALS. So we're treading on the heels in this measure of much, much larger projects like JET and W7X. Perhaps an easier way to look at the same data is the pressure time chart. Uh, of course, pressure is just the product of density and temperature. If we look in the other dimension, which is how much energy out for energy in, then we fared even better. Then we're number two in the world, right behind JET. And JET is ahead by only about a factor of 50%. Well ahead of the $5 billion NIF. Now this is a way I like to put the, the uh, race, which is if you take into account how much money we spend for how much wall plug efficiency, we're number one right now. <laughs> so obviously NIF rates way below us because they spent um, a thousand times as much money. Now, again, obviously this is a snapshot of where the race is now. It doesn't mean we're going to win the race. We might be the hare and somebody else might be the turtle. And it was the turtle who won. But this is how it stands now. So, before we break again for questions, I basically want to pose the question. If this is basically, and I think it is, a fairly objective measure of where the race for fusion stands now. How does such a small effort as ours, we've had five million in funding over the last eight years, uh, the full-time staff of this effort is in this room, some of the part-time staff as well. Um, how do we do better in, by certain objective measures than projects that have hundreds or thousand times more uh, resources and staff. I don't think the answer is we're much smarter than they are. I think the answer is we've chosen an easier route. And the key to understanding that is how we're trying to control the plasma. Because to get fusion, you have to be able to control the plasma in some way. And basically, the dominant approach of almost all the other uh, efforts in fusion is to get the plasma to sit still, to behave. Good dog. And the problem is plasma does not want to sit still because of the pinch effect. This is, a pinch effect is what we're using 
But you can't avoid the pinch effect when you have plasmas. It means that plasma it wants to form currents that go in the same direction. They attract. They repel the currents going in the other direction. They form filaments. You basically get a can of worms, almost if you can imagine the filaments as worms. What we're trying to do is to use the instabilities to say, okay, the plasma wants to make, form these instabilities, so we'll, we will use the filamentation to compress the plasma. And in doing that, we're basically imitating nature. Nature doesn't produce tokamaks, but nature does produce filaments. It does produce plasmoids. It produces them at all sorts of scales. We observe them in solar flares. We observe them in what are called herbic harrow objects, which are the beams coming out of stars that are in the process of formation. We observe them in quasars. We have even observed them in the formation of our own spiral galaxies on, on, in extreme astronomical scales. Here on Earth, we certainly observe some of these same phenomena in some of the phenomena in lightning. For example, uh, in people may have heard of these things called sprites, which are lightning bolts that go upward into space, far above thunderstorms. And we observe filamentation in the aurora. So this is a basic organizing principle of nature. By using that organizing principle, by saying we want to guide the instability rather than fight the instability, I think we end up with a much easier path. And that's why we can get results with far less resources. That doesn't mean it is easy. It's not. So I want to just say one of the, uh, talk about some of the difficulties we've had in getting to where we are and going further. Accelerating Advanced Fusion Energy.